our precious and dear Lord, Heavenly Father. We thank you that we have the right to come before you this morning again. Thank you for giving us a good night of rest and awaking us this morning in your mercy. As we are coming together again to study your word this morning, please bless us again like you did the whole week. I would like to thank you for all the new friends we were able to meet here, for all the light we received here, for all the light that we will still receive until the end of the week, that we can go home and go on with your studyings, that the light will get brighter and brighter and will spread all around the world, that we may prepare the way for the second coming of our dear and precious Lord Jesus Christ. So may you be with us, may you fill our hearts with your Holy Spirit. In humbleness we are coming before you, may you bless us. This is my humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. By now, um, most of us may have realized that the kingdoms of Bible prophecy are being repeated, or rather the histories surrounding the kingdoms of Bible prophecy are being repeated. And in the reputation, the histories the histories surrounding, surrounding them are important to salvation, our soul salvation. In fact, it, it is the increase of knowledge, it is that increase of knowledge that the little book represents, a reputation of history. In the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 13, You go there with me. John sees a beast rising up out of the sea. He says, And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. The leopard-like beast is none other than the, the papal power. And the papal power achieve a certain agenda on the earth which will give light to the, to the meaning of when understood to the meaning of the term the leopard beast or the beast was like unto a leopard. In 1798, the papacy had accomplished dividing the world into four divisions. The four divisions are brought to view in the book, sorry, in the last five verses of the book of Daniel, Daniel 11, 40 to 45. The divisions, and namely the king of the north, which the papacy is, the king of the south, um, the glorious land, and Egypt. Um, I suppose I would have to give some explanation as to um, my saying that the papacy divided the world into four divisions. Well. If we examine the rise of the King of the South and we, will, and we, we examine the history surrounding the French Revolution and the Bolshevik Revolution, we will understand that the mastermind behind the French Revolution was Adam Weishaupt. And Weishaupt was, uh, was the, the, the master, well, he really um, was the mastermind behind uh, um, Lenin's um, ideology. When, when, a, when, you, when, when we go into the history concerning the French Revolution and everything surrounding Illuminism, it will enlighten us as to the power behind the rise of this power. 
And it's obvious that the fallen churches of Babylon came out of the Roman Catholic Church. Revelation 17, verse 5 says, refers to the papacy as Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And obviously that the king of the north is the papacy, so that's the third division. And by default, the rest of the world makes the fourth division. So four divisions the world has, div has been divided into. Now, why am, I, why am I so interested in these four divisions? Or why is the book of Daniel, Daniel 11, 40 to 45, dealing with these four divisions? Um, in fact, uh, a close examination of the, the kingdoms of Bible prophecy in the order in which they, they unfolded, or in the order in which they ruled the earth, when we examine the, the reputation of the history, we will see that these kingdoms are, the, the order are, are exactly the same with the spiritual reputation. For example, spiritual Babylon, the papacy, um, she's, she's referred to in Revelation 17, 5, 17, 5 as Mystery Babylon the Great. And we understand that Mystery Babylon the Great repeated the history of ancient Babylon in that God's people were captive, for three, for, were captive until three decrees later they came out of Babylon, just same as um, the history surrounding ancient Israel in literal Babylon. And we see that um, following mystery Babylon the Great, the rise of, um, of the Persian power, in both cases, both literal and spiritual, that is being repeated. Um, the mystery that may surround some of our minds at this point in time is the leopard beast, the leopard beast that followed the Persian power, um, which I was, which earlier on I spoke of concerning the four divisions that the world have been divided into and the fact that the papacy is referred to as the leopard-like beast. How do we, what is the importance or what is the significance of probing into that aspect of Revelation 13, as John refers to beasts, the, th the, the papacy as a leopard-like beast. Well, if we go into the history of, of ancient Greece, and if you will go with me to the book of Daniel, and Daniel chapter 8, to begin with. Um, beginning from um, verse 19 of the chapter, as the angel comes to give Daniel understanding, he says, And he said, Behold, I will make thee know what shall be in the last end of the indignation. For at the time appointed, the end shall be. The ram which thou sawest having two horns are the kings of Media and Persia. And the rough goat is the king of Greece. And the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king. Now that being broken, whereas four stood up for it, four kingdoms shall stand up out of the nation, but not in his power. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the fool, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. If you will go with me to Daniel chapter 11. And keeping in mind the verse that stated that in the latter time of their kingdom, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. And we know that refers to pagan Rome. Pagan Rome is that king that was to stand up in the latter time of their kingdom when the transgressions are come to the full. Daniel 11 verse 11 picks up the, picks up, at a point in time when the king of the south is conquering um, Antiochus' his kingdom. Antiochus being um, king of Syria, the king of the north. Verse 11 says, And the king of the south shall, shall be moved with Shola, and shall come forth and fight with him, even with the king of, uh, king of the north. And he shall set forth 
a great multitude, but the multitude shall be given into his hand. Antiochus, Antiochus lost that battle, and following that battle, um, well, 14 years later, the Ptolemy had died and, and left a five-year-old son on the throne. And Antiochus saw that the, the opportunity for him to gain the kingdom or gain revenge um, was now before him, so he returns. Um, verse 13 says, For the king of the north shall return and shall set forth a multitude greater than the former and shall certainly come after certain years with a great army and with, and with much riches. And we know that um, the king of the south were not able to withstand him. We st Nevertheless, um, verse 14 introduces, introduces um, the robbers of thy people, namely um, pagan Rome, as pagan Rome is coming into the scene. And this is the point in time that Daniel 8 verse 23 points to, if you will turn with me to Daniel 8 verse 23 and don't lose Daniel 11. Reading it again. Daniel 8, 23. Stated, and in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. This is the point in time where this king is standing up in verse 14 of Daniel 11. And in those times, reading verse 14 again, and in those times, there shall many stand up against the king of the south. Also the robbers of thy, of thy people shall exalt themselves to establish the vision. Um, following this, if you will drop down with me to, um, well, it's, uh, the next few verses, the next verse introduces the, the point in time where pagan Rome um, takes the kingdom of Antiochus and becomes the king of the north. And verse 17, if you will drop down with me to verse 17, and he shall also set his face, that is Rome, set his face to enter with the strength of his whole kingdom and the upright ones with him. The upright ones here represents the, the Jewish nation as they had already formed a league with him, with pagan Rome to um, basically to fulfill Daniel chapter 8 verse 9. If you'll go with me to Daniel 8 verse 9. And out of one of them came forth a little horn which waxed exceedingly great towards the south and towards the east and towards the pleasant land. Um, three areas that pagan Rome had to conquer before she gained control of the world. And the process, um, beginning in verse 17 of Daniel 11, if you go with me, verse 17 of Daniel 11 again, where the upright ones are with pagan Rome in removing the king of the south. And of course, um, if you read Uriah Smith's um, account on this, and he will say to you, he, you will read that he said that without this aid from the Jews, Rome would not have been able to accomplish her purpose. Now, it is, it is that history that Daniel 11, 40 to 45 is repeating in relationship to the rise of Papal Rome as she seeks to gain control of the world. And she has those divisions before her to conquer. But as she is doing so, she is marching the same way as pagan Rome did in relationship to taking the body of the leopard. The body of the leopard at the time of the rise of pagan Rome was divided into four divisions. And pagan Rome had to subdue those four divisions. And papal Rome has to do no less the same thing. She has to um, march in that way. 
as we examine the state, the state of things in 1798, that is clear that the papacy has those obstacles before her and she has to overcome them before she can gain control of the body of the leopard. Uh, we need to consider or focus rather on a particular part of, that, of, of those divisions and namely that is the glorious land. The glorious land in the processing of it reveals to, or the understanding of the processing of it how the papacy brings the glorious land under its control is very important to us um, as far as our salvation is concerned. And um, in the processing of, of, of those four divisions, and I, and I hope I'm not losing anyone at this point in time, uh, but as we move along, it should become clearer and clearer. In the processing of the division of the glorious land, um, we see that in, in, 19, in, in 1844, and I'm jumping all the way to 1844 because I believe that you have enough information to um, bridge the gap from 1798 to 1844. In 1844, um, Ellen White, in a, in a statement from the Great Controversy, says the second angel's message of Revelation 14 was first preached in the summer of 1844, and it then had a more direct application to the churches of the United States where the warning of the judgment had been most widely proclaimed and most generally rejected, and where the, where the declension in the churches had been most, rap, most rapid. But the message of the second angel did not reach its complete fulfillment in 1844. The churches then experienced a moral fall. In consequence of the refusal of the light of, of the Advent message, but that fall was not complete, as they have continued to reject the special truths of this time. They have fallen lower and lower. So she's saying that the fall that the churches experienced in 1844 was not complete. Um, The thought that you should hold in your head, the fact that, uh, the fact that these, the, the, the literal kingdoms of Bible prophecy are being repeated spiritually in the, in the entities that we have, we have been looking at, namely the papacy, the United States of America, the Soviet Union. Um, it is important to, at this time, bear in mind that the leopard beast cannot be said to, 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 to be on the throne until the Persian power has reached its complete, its, has, has accomplished its purpose on the earth. And the processing of the, of the did I say that right? The leopard beast cannot be said to, 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 to be on the throne of the earth until the Persian power has accomplish his purpose on the earth. The processing of the Persian power is, is completing the purpose of, uh, complete, completing its purpose on the earth. Um, namely, we have just looked at the first processing of the, of, of the Persian power, and that is the fall, the moral fall that the church has ex, um, um, experienced in 1844. Um, this moral fall led to America being set up for the full control of the papacy, or for, the, for America becoming a dragon power, a place where Satan's seat will be fully established. However, in this moral fall, uh, the papacy now has vantage ground in her work as she's bringing the world under, con under control. And I wanted you to see the, 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 the movements taking place in Daniel 11, 40 to 45, as these events are unfolding on the earth, as the papacy is accomplishing its purpose. 
remember and keeping in mind that the papacy is repeating the history of pagan Rome as pagan Rome took control of the body of the leopard, um, beginning with the king of the south. So I want to drop down with, jump down to 1989. In 1989, we, we come to the point in time where uh, the king of the south is being removed. In 1989, what was happening that the government of the, of the United States of America was, was suffering, or rather, um, the government of the United States of America suffered a moral fall in that a Protestant country was, was uniting with the papacy to remove her common enemy, or their common en enemy, the Soviet Union. But as a result of this moral fall, we see that, the, that uh, at that point in time, the very history of Daniel 11 verse 17 is being repeated, where the glorious land is forming an alliance with Rome in order to remove the obstacles in her way. Daniel 11 verse 17, if you remember the upright ones, um, form an alliance with Rome to remove the obstacles, the, to remove the king of the south. And we, see, we, saw that, we, see that, we saw that history being repeated in 1989. So the processing, the processing was well on the way in, in that um, the first division, the first division, I'm sorry, I'm, I have so many thoughts in my head at the time, I'm trying to figure out which, which is best to bring out. The first division, um, when pagan Rome came on the scene, as the king of the north, she could, because she had, a, a, by the time of the removal of the king of the south, pagan Rome was then the king of the north. And if you will notice that the papacy in, the, the papacy in 1989 was already the king of the north. And the alliance that was being formed in, in verse 17 with the, with the king of the north by the glorious land to remove the king of the south, is, that is the history that is being repeated in um, 1989. It is clear to see, it is wise to bring this, bring this to your thoughts that it is upon the rise of pagan Rome to gain control of the world that this event is taking place when the pagan Rome is the king of the north. And so it is in the case of 1989, upon the rise of the papacy to gain control of the world, when the papacy is the king of the north, that this alliance with, with the glorious land is being formed. Um, and remember, at, at that point in time with pagan Rome, pagan Rome is seeking to gain control of the leopard beast. Um, and as we will see that the four divisions of the world at this point in time, one of the divisions being the king of the south, we have the glorious land forming the, forming the alliance with pagan Rome to remove or to, or to bring that division into, into the harmony of Rome. Um, bear with me a second. In this processing, remembering that, and I want to take you to a part of, I'm going to take you back to, 17, to 1844, take your thoughts back to 1844 in relationship to the statement that Ella White made concerning Jesus' ministry when he came to this earth. She says, at the beginning of his ministry, Christ had driven from the temple those who defiled it by their unholy traffic, and his stern and godlike demeanor had struck terror to the hearts of the, of the scheming traders. At the close of his ministry, he came again to the temple and found it still discarded, sorry, desecrated, sorry, as before. The condition of things was even worse than before. 
The outer court of the temple was like a vast cattle yard with the, with the, with the cries of the animals and the sharp um, ch chinking of the coins was mingled, was mingled the sound of angry uh, um, alter, altercation between the, tra between the traffickers. And among them were heard the voices of men in sacred, in the sac in sacred office. The dignitaries of the temple were themselves engaged in buying and selling and the exchange of money. So completely, so completely were they controlled by the greed of gain that in the sight of God, they were not better than, them, than, the, than thieves. Um, in Second Circuit Messages, page 118, she says, when Jesus began his public ministry, he cleansed the temple from its sacrilegious profanation. Among the last acts of his ministry was the second cleansing of the temple. So in the last work of the warning of the world, two distinct calls are made to the churches. The second angel's message is, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And in the loud cry of the third angel's message, a voice is heard from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God had remembered her iniquities. The, first, the second angel's message preached in 1844, marking the first cleansing of the temple when Christ began his ministry in the most holy place, um, will be repeated again on the, the angel of Revelation 18. Babylon is fallen, come out of her, my people. This cleansing is important for us to identify um, one of the reasons for the cleansing that is taking place. If you remember the history brought to view in Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. And verse 12. And to the angel of the church of Pergamos, write these things, saith he which had the sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works, and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is. And thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you, where Satan dwelleth. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast, them, thou, thou hast dared them that hold the doctrines of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. Um, Jesus brings to view the history of Balaam and Balak, um, for the church of Pergamos. And if you remember that um, the church of Pergamos, the church of Pergamos is the church that we've been studying a lot of, 508 to, well, it really begins in 535, 523, 533, Pergamos. I'm losing track of it now. Um, to 538. 523 five, to 538. But I may be wrong about the, the 323 to 538. That's right. Okay, 323 to 538 is the Church of Pergamos. And during that time period, in fact, Haskell, you, if you notice the very first part of the reading on screen, Haskell says during the period of ecclesiastical history when the message of the, to Pergamos is, ap, is applicable, the church was guilty of idolatry and fornication. Least Christians should misunderstand the application and be led to deny the, ch the, the charge. The Spirit of God cites them to the experience of Balaam and Balak, the king of, of the Moabites, at a time when Israel was about to enter the Promised Land. It's important to 
um, remember the, the closing part of that statement at the time when Israel was about to enter the promised land. And we know the history surrounding this, um, this event. Just before the children of Israel entered the promised land, the Moabites came in. And Ellen White says this will be repeated again in the experience of the Advent Church. Just before we enter into the promised land, Moab will come into the church to um, repeat the history of ancient Israel. If you will drop down with me to Daniel, sorry, Revelation 11. Revelation 11, still dealing with the time period of the Pergamos Church. And there was given me on. There was given me a reed, verse one, like unto a rod. And the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. And the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days. The power that was given to God's witnesses to stand in that time period where the work of Jezebel was being accomplished. But you notice that the work of Jezebel and the work of Balaam is brought to view in the two churches, the, churches of per the church of Pergamos and the church of Thyatira. But um, what is not seen in the church of Pergamos is Moab, the element of Moab. You see Balak, you see, you see Balaam, but you don't see Moab. On the Thyatira, you see, you see um, Jezebel, you see Ahab, the state, but you don't see the false prophets. But when you get up to 1844, you see the false prophets in that the, advent, the, uh, the manifestation of the power of God revealed the false prophets, which was hidden. And the false prophet is none other than Moab. You will have to conclude that, and it, it doesn't require much thought to see that Moab is the false prophet. Um, in fact, Ellen White says, she says that the description of Moab represents the churches that have become like Moab. And no need to read any further concerning that aspect. She says it represents the churches that have become like Moab. Um, well, in 1844, the cleansing that took place, the, second, the, the, first, the first cleansing that took place, we can see that Moab, Moab was being cleansed out of God's church. But Moab was developed to the, accomplish the purposes of Balaam and Balak. Um, and we must remember that, 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 that the history of Balaam and Balak is being repeated um, on the church of Laodicea. Why do I say that? Remember, Manuscript Ulysses, when, she, when Ellen White deals with the history surrounding the rise of the papacy, she says that that history will be repeated. Um, and that the, it was the history of Pergamos as the papacy gained control of Europe in removing free obstacles. And that history will be repeated in the experience of Laodicea. The history of the Philadelphian church will be repeated as you consider the statement, the 10 virgins will be repeated to the very letter. So therefore, the work of Moab is something that has to be taken into consideration as we, as we um, near the close of this Earth's history. But remember, I'm talking about here as of the papacy gaining control of the leopard, of the leopard beast, of the, or, or the body of the leopard. Um, I want you to go back with me to, just to refresh your memory as to where I am in, or where I'm taking this. If, I want you to go back with me to Daniel chapter 8 and verse 23 as we just reacquaint our minds again with that thought that 
and in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. In the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full. Now, if you, go, if you reflect on pagan Rome as she came in the latter time of the kingdom of Greece, the four divisions of Greece, you will see that this is the time where pagan Rome accomplishes things like um, not only removing the king of the south and taking the king of the south's territory but, and taking control of, of the glorious land, but she also sets up the abomination that Daniel spoke of in the land, in the glorious land. And so, and all this is taking place in the latter time of the kingdom of Greece. The pagan Rome comes in, takes this kingdom, and accomplishes these things. The abomination that maketh desolate, being set up in the glorious land. Know that papal Rome, this is the object of papal Rome, as she is moving in the same way that pagan Rome moved, to take control of the four, the four divisions. We have seen the first division went down in 1989, and obviously her her focus right now is on the glorious land. In the glorious land, we see that we saw in 1844 that, that Rome accomplished um, a partial victory um, over the glorious land in that the churches suffered a moral fall. And we saw in 1989 the government following in the same path as the churches a moral fall by uniting with the... With the um, the army with, with, sorry, with Rome. Um, bearing that in mind, as we move into the second phase for, um, of the cleansing, the second cleansing, where the angel of Revelation 18 will at some point in time um, be given the loud cry concerning the abomination that will be set up in the land. Now, if you will visualize this in your mind, that at the Sunday Law in the United States of America, the Persian power um, would, have, would have reached its fullness in that, according to Revelation 18, she, has be, she would become the habitation of devils and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. She would be, she would be fully Babylon. Remember, Ellen White says that the fall was a moral fall, but the fall was not complete. Is that the Sunday law that this Persian power reaches its fullness as a Babylonian power, even as Persian, as the Persian power was a Babylonian power. Now, bearing that in mind that this Persian power, the glorious land, several dif dif different names depending on, depending on what aspect of the message you try to bring out, is one of the divisions, one of the four divisions that Rome divided the world into. Um, so that her, the history of pagan Rome can be repeated. Remember that So th when this division comes to the full, at the Sunday law, when it comes to the full, we see also the leopard has come to the full. The leopard has come to the full because of the, sun, the, the, the Sunday law, is, the Sunday law bringing the glorious land into its fullness, bringing the Persian power to its fullness. The leopard cannot reach its fullness until the Persian power has reached its fullness, what which is, Persian, Persian power? right, what Persian power? What is it? The United States of America, remember, repeats the history of Persia. For example, remember Persia brought down Babylon while God's people were captive in Babylon. And under the third degree, God's people came out of Babylon under the occupation of the Persian power. In like manner, mystery Babylon was brought down by, first of all, France, having two horns, which was Sodom and Egypt. Um, then, three decrees later, God's people came out of Babylon. And then the United States of America ascended the throne, having two horns, um, republicanism and protestantism. The United States of America becomes the third Persian power. But the fall in 1844 was not complete. She is not a full dragon power until the second, until the second cleansing 
Babylon is fallen when she has become the habitation of devils and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. It is, the, it is, but remembering, again, what I'm saying to you that Rome had divided the world into four divisions and one of the divisions was the glorious land, um, the, the churches of, the fallen churches of Babylon. And until that division reaches fullness, the leopard, the leopard cannot be said to have reached his fullness. But if you will consider the verse while you're bearing these thoughts in mind, verse 23 of Daniel 8, it is said, and in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, in the latter time of the kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, and that's what you see in happening at the Sunday law, when the transgression has come to the full, what, what the, the verse says, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. And that, of course, was pagan Rome. But now, in the fulfillment of this at the Sunday law, we're looking at the rise of papal Rome. Rome, which is that king that understanding dark sentences uh, will be standing up. At the same time, you will have the fulfillment where, the, the, where pagan Rome, remember, where pagan Rome sets up the abomination in the glorious land. So that has been fulfilled at the same time when the transgressors are come to the full. Papal Rome has now set up the abomination in the glorious land. You know, this is, it is clear, it is clear by, by, by examining this part of, the, part of the message that the glorious land is not the church, but it is the United States of America as we examine these points of truth. Um, In the second cleansing, I want you to, to uh, focus now on the second cleansing and the purpose of the second cleansing. The work of Moab, as Ellen White says, just before we entered into, enter into um, the promised land, Moab's work of the past will be repeated. If you'll drop down to the portion of Ellen White's writing, Signs of the Times, December 30, 1880, she said, the Midianish women were seen stealing into the camp. Singly and in little companies, their parents excited no alarm, and so quietly were their plans conducted that the attention of Moses was not called to the matter. It was the object of these women, in their association with the Hebrews, to first draw their attention from, from the God of Israel to hidden traditions writs and customs, and then to allure them to, into transgression of the divine law. These motives were studiously concealed under the gab of friendship so that they were not su 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 suspected even by the great leader. These hidden women feared to excite the indignation of Moses, but they did not consider that no evil work could be concealed from the all-seeing eye of God. And this is the very work that is taking place in God's church at this time by the fallen churches of Babylon, Moab. Moab has entered God's church at this point in time and we see the church is celebrating and with the beating of the drums and the dancing and all this they call the moving of the Holy Spirit. But this is the work of Moab as we, as we nearing the promised land, as we are about to cross over Jordan, her work is being carried on. The hellish plans were all too successful. It was, not, it was not long before the position of licentiousness and idolatry had spread like a deadly infection through the congregation of Israel. The people seemed to be infatuated. The rulers and leading men were among the first to, to step over the line, and so general was the defection that it is recorded in the sacred word that Israel joined herself unto Baal Peor. Alas, the people who had been so signally um, protected from Satan's power should now deliberately walk into the net which he had laid for them. Suddenly, Moses was aroused to perceive the mighty, the mighty evil in the camp, and he was horrified as he discovered its nature and extent. So, success, so successful 
had been the plot of these vile, artful women that his own people were participating in the abominable scenes enacted at the worship of Baal, and the sacrifice and sacrilegious feasts were becoming established among the Israelites. And we see this history being repeated extensively at this point in time in the house of God. The second cleansing is about cleansing Moab out of God's church. The interesting thing about Moab as she conducts her work within Adventism, um, and this, is, this, this will come on the craft the craft of Satan. And Ellen White says it's consummate craft, it's perfect craft. In meaning that this craft, Satan has the ability to make truth look like error and error look like truth. And as the work of Moab is part of that craft within Adventism, many of God's people who are, who are um, zealous for his truth at this time and seeing the celebration, seeing the acts of Moab within the church, um, the, Satan brings a temptation to them that they should separate from the church, that they should come out from the church and set up new organizations. But that's, that, is the, that, is the, that is the very event that took place in 1844 when Moab was cleansed out of the church. And we see that a large class of Adventism will be cleansed out and they will go out to join Moab. Remember, Moab achieved two things when, when she entered the camp of, Jew, of, of Israel. That one class remained remain in the camp, but they were boldly fraternizing with Moab. And another class went out and worshipped with Moab. There are, cla there, are two, there, there are two classes within Adventism. There are people within Adventism who are boldly um, walking hand in hand with celebration, with walking hand in hand with the fallen churches of Babylon the principles of the fallen churches of Babylon uh, are entering the churches. And there's another class who are, who are going out of the church and they're forming independent organizations. Not independent ministries, now I'm talking about independent churches. Um, and that is the work of Moab. As they see this thing, they, they, you know, it, in, in their minds that God has left the church and the church has become Babylon, so they need to form new, new organizations. And that is the work of Moab in the house of God. And just before, Ellen White says, just before we enter the promised land, Moab's work will accomplish this purpose. Um, I want you to notice that, that all of that is reaching its climax um, in, in repeat of the 23rd verse of, of of Daniel 8, in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the fool, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. At the Sunday law, the papacy has full control of the world. Moab has accomplished its purpose within Adventism. And the loud cry is to go is to, go to the whole world to to um, they open the sins of Babylon. Babylon is fallen, is fallen. If you go with me to Revelation 18, to close off. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the whole of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have, have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out from her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. For her sins have breached unto heaven, and God had remembered her iniquities. Her sins reach unto heaven at the Sunday law. And it's at that time that 
God's people would have decided their fate. Moab, Moab would have accomplished her purpose within the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and the two classes would have been fully developed. As we understand the, the working of, the, of iniquity as it's unfolding, we will stand separate and stand secure in the righteousness of Jesus. If we don't understand these things, our human perception of things will, 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 is, not, is not enough to save us. Though we may have the right sentiments towards Christ Jesus, but then we may join those who are there um, forming independent organizations, standing separate from the organization, from God's organized body, and so be lost in, at the end of all of this. In your presentation, you talk about the body of the leopard. And as I understand what you're saying, I believe that to be representing Greece. Greece, mm -hmm. Alexander the Great, is the power that established the kingdom of the world that Bible prophecy is portrayed upon. His kingdom was divided into east, west, north, south. So when you're speaking about Rome, taking the body of the leopard, you're saying how Rome once again takes control of Alexander's mm -hmm. kingdom, spiritually the whole world. Right. And in order to do that, Rome has to conquer all four of those areas, the north, the south, Egypt, and the glorious land. That's right. And that history is portrayed in the first history when pagan Rome comes in at the end of Greece, Greece's time when the transgressors are reached the full. That's right. And the abomination of desolation that pagan Rome accomplished in AD 70 when it placed its standards in the sacred pre precincts of the temple right. is pointing forward to the abomination of desolation at the Sunday law in the United States. And during that flow of events, as the King of the North, the papacy, is conquering these obstacles one by one to once again come into the control of the world, at the same time, we have the history of the children of Israel just before they're going into the Promised Land. And that history has been set forth in the history of Pergamos and Thyatira, which brings all those lessons to bear at this time period in Earth's history. Right, on the Laodicean church experience. And I, f I think there may have been a couple other points that were, that the, the, the w way that you're portraying things kind of, I think Dwayne's question about the United States, how, how's that the Persian power? What you're saying is, is that it's a twofold power that places Babylon on the throne and takes her off, right. such That's as it. Medes and the Persians took her off. France was a twofold power. France, Clovis, put her on the throne of the earth. France took her down in 1798. That's right. The United States puts her on the throne at the end, takes her down when she's burned with fly, fire. Close. Shall we kneel for the closing prayer? <laughs> Dear Father God, we thank you for being with us at this time. We thank you for the blessing of the angels that excel in strength. As Lord, we study these things that are vital to our soul's salvation. Pray that your Holy Spirit will continue to be with us and will bring those things to our minds that we may be intellectually and spiritually settled into this truth, Lord, in the time of this sealing, Lord. Be with, be the, be with the rest of the proceedings of this day, Lord, and I pray that all things be done to your honor and glory, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>